Let's talk about one of the most controversial things in poker, the concept of angling and what is an angle. I'm Bart Hansen and I've been a professional poker player for over 15 years and a poker trainer and a poker teacher. And I've taught dozens and dozens of people in private lessons. And on my website, crushlivepoker.com, I've also commentated thousands of hours of these live stream games and played on hundreds of different episodes and shows. Now, over the past week, a couple of controversial things went on on a few poker live streams. Last night on Hustler Casino Live, which was a big game, and then also last week on the Texas Card House live stream from Austin. We're gonna take a look at both incidents, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts as to whether or not we see some angles and what really went on in these particular hands. So this first one comes from a hand from Hustler Casino Live, which is a really, really big live stream and I've commentated on it many times. This is their big game on Friday and they were playing 100, 200, no limit. This is real cash with a 200 big blind ante. These maroon chips are $5,000. This is real cash, not a tournament. And get into a little controversial situation here between uh, this player here, Poker Bunny, who I'm not super familiar with, and this other guy, Ben, who I'm also not all that familiar with. I'm gonna call the queen. Not even a spade. Maybe not the answer. You see? I just oh. Oh. Extra yeah. money, you made extra money. I called him with a flush. I, I still think about the ace-10, I shouldn't call. I, I would win like 10k if I don't call. Yeah, but you're being results-oriented. What if what if another card comes on the river? Then are you happy with your fold or not? That's what matters. Ben raises in late position. Poker Bunny has a suited connector. She's going to re-raise. No, no, no. He said I should call. All right. So let's stop it right there because it happened very, very quick. So the backstory here was that Poker Bunny had been sort of relentlessly three betting, which means re-raising Ben. The entire night, Ben might have been a little bit upset by some other hand. So he's already kind of steaming and he raises here to 700 from the cutoff with the $215,000 stack. Poker Bunny once again, three bets out of the big blind with just under 30,000, which is going to come into play with seven, six of hearts. And he just quickly calls and they go off to a flop very, very quickly uh, to the point where it even beat the graphics to the punch. I should call. Yeah. And she gets a beautiful flop. Bottom two against top pair, good kicker. Her opponent just added a hundred thousand dollars because he was tilting. I anticipate Poker Bunny getting a double up here. So let's stop it right here. This is just an unbelievable situation. So she raises out of the big blind with seven, six of hearts. She's out of position, which means that she has to act first. And now she flops bottom two pair and Ben flops top pair. So Ben is tilted as DGAF, the commentator said, he just added a bunch of money to his stack. And instead of betting, she actually checks it over to him and he fires 3,900 here. So she's got a super strong hand, better even than aces. For the most part, Usually, if someone is going to check here off of these stack sizes, they're probably going to raise. So DGAF expected her to double through Ben, and uh, that's what I would expect here as well. I'd expect a raise to come a lot. Well, that's what I just said with my hand. Don't give us ten seconds. Did you see the answer? She's just trying to get all the money in. All in. Wait. I think I got them. Yeah, I mean, I have to be all in now. Like, this isn't an angle or something. I don't know. What? How much is it? <laughs> this is interesting. All right, so what has just happened here? So she has check raised all in. Now, in poker, if you verbalize something, it's committing. So because she said all in, she's absolutely all in. It doesn't really matter what her intention here is. 
Now, this is where the controversy comes sort of into play because obviously she is making it look like she didn't know she had all that much money behind or she thought that she had less than what she actually has. But she actually doesn't really have that much anyways here. I mean, flipping back here, Ben Bet's 3,900, if she raises to eight or 9,000 here, she's basically committed anyways. So that's really not even that much of an issue here in this particular spot. But the other thing to here going on is that Ben is asking for a count. Nothing has happened. The only thing that has happened here is that she has made it appear as though she didn't know that she had 29,000 left in her stack. But if you look at the situation and if you play poker, it doesn't matter. The action is on Ben. He just got check raised by the preflop three better here. And that is normally gonna mean that King 10 is rarely gonna be good here. If I were Ben, I would think that I'm absolute toast. Now to intensify this whole situation, she uses the word angle. So that's always gonna pop in everybody's head when she says, oh, this isn't an angle or something where she's making it look like that she didn't know that she had that many chips when in fact she really doesn't even have that many chips. Yes. Yeah, got you. Okay. This is really I interesting. Thinking, I just had 30,000. Help me out. Yeah, push those whites towards me. Thank you. Wow. 31. One. 31, one. Yeah. One time. One time. Unbelievable. <laughs> Run it one time. Correct. So he does make the call, but he got a count. He knows it's 31,100 total. So obviously he's visually frustrated. Like he says unbelievable, but he knows that it's 31,100 total to call. Nothing has changed here just because she makes it look like she thinks she has less than she actually has. Nothing's changed about what his decision point is in this specific pot. What difference does it make in uh, the way that she behaved in the hand? Yeah. Is Poker Buddy gonna get the double up? Looks like it. Three times out of four, she will. She doesn't. She gets counterfeit. She gets stacked. Yeah, I'm sorry. I like, I literally, it wasn't. Do it more. <laughs> Ben's tilted, firing $25 chips at the dealer as tips. I thought I had 20K, so I was like. <laughs> <laughs> this is theater. You, you, you gotta love it. And even if you don't love it, we ask you to like it. <laughs> he was steamed up. He's still steamed up. He feels like something weird happened there, and it was close. I thought I had, like, 20K. I mean, the dude won the hand. He's storming off. He just won $68,000 and nothing changed about the information of the hand. She got counterfeit. She had bottom two pair, but the fives came and paired on the river. So he actually has a better hand now with tens and fives. And they only ran it once, which means that they weren't going to run it multiple times. So they were just going to run it once for the entire pot. And he won. So this next hand came from the Texas Card House live stream in Austin, just down the street from me. And this is a much more sort of nuanced situation dealing with a lot of non-standard things going on, which you will sometimes see in a cash game and especially in a live stream where the rules might be a little bit more loose. And we do get a call from Josh. Go to this river, which is a heart, and the three of hearts. Jade's Law gets there with the flush. And did Josh just go all in? 
Josh rips $2,500 in. So we picked it up here on the turn. And this is nice because we've got an action box here on the left. Basically, both players have the same hand on the turn. They're both open-ended with 9-8, but J-Dog, who's in seat four with the beanie hat on, he has a flush draw. And you can see that Josh is the preflop raiser, so he bet the flop call, he bet the turn. He got raised by J-Dog with a combo draw, and he called. So it went 130 to 500 call. And then on the river, the heart comes, and Josh bluffs at it all in. Now, I will say that it says that J-Dog has $953 in his stack, but in actuality, these pinks are 500, the blacks are hundreds, the greens are 25s, the reds are fives. He probably has more like 1,500. So when Josh bets, it is an over bet, but it's about $1,500, not 2,500. So it's about $1,500 into a $1,200 pot. This would be an amazing bluff if it works out. Now, for the most part here, if I raised on the turn with a combo draw and I made a backdoor flush and my opponent now moved all in, I'm going to call um, and it's going to be pretty close to a snap call. I mean, if I'm J-Dog, Josh might have ace king of hearts, ace jack of hearts, something like that. But it's a really strong hand making a backdoor flush here with 9-8 of hearts. So I would have called already. Massive overbet here. Two of them are conversing. I can't make out what's being said on my headset. Now, what has just happened here? And I'm going to be splicing some things in. They made an edit with some zooms and stuff over on the TCH uh, YouTube channel. And then also Josh, who is in C3, actually made a comment on the uh, YouTube edit. And basically what's happened here is there's some conversing, you know, J-Dog is tanking with a hand he probably shouldn't really tank with. And then they're talking about whether or not they want to show one card to each sort of player. Now, from Josh's perspective, apparently Josh is not a native English speaker. And what he said was, is that if you show me one card, I might show you one of my cards. So what's going on here? Well, the number one thing to take away from this is that Josh is already all in. Nothing has changed. So if Josh sees one of J-Dog's cards, nothing changes about this hand because the action is on J-Dog. Now, Josh is obviously bluffing here, so he wouldn't want one of his cards to be revealed. Now, where the confusion comes in is apparently J-Dog in seat four is making it look like that Josh agreed to show one of his cards if J-Dog showed one of his own cards or if he let Josh turn over one of his cards. And it's pretty obvious that they were they did agree or J-Dog agreed to let Josh turn over one of his cards. But from Josh's perspective, he said, oh, maybe I'll show you one of mine if I show you yours. But now that J-Dog has turned over his cards, Josh doesn't want to turn over one of his cards because he realizes a, a whole ton of information that would give away because the action is on J-Dog. Now it looks like J-Dog is saying, wait a minute, you just turned over one of my cards. I get to turn over one of your cards. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Like you're not allowed to turn over my cards, but it's very, very clear that he allowed Josh to turn over one of his cards. I mean, we just saw it. And now we do have a four call. Apparently Josh turned over his card. I was not looking. Florida Live! You can't flip this card over. You can't do that. We'll see how the four sorts this out. Uh, 
agree. No, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I don't know if they were trying to agree. He's denying it. They're going to show each other's cards, one card each. But he flipped one of his cards. So, and now, yeah. Well, I said. Do not touch somebody's card. No, no, no. Yeah, I, don't said, I said, I'll show you where that is. That is shite. He did say that. No. That is I a full that. Card. His hand's dead, or he shows me a card. He can't just touch my card and flip one. I card. didn't touch your card. Yeah, so I, I've just watched it back like about a minute ago. He totally turned the card over. Quite think, frankly, I think he knew damn well what he was doing. There's no place for that in this game. Now, I'm pretty sure this is William L. commentating. I apologize if I get that wrong, but I'm going to sort of defend if it is William commentating because it's very, very hard to hear any table talk if you actually even had table talk piped in to him. But it's kind of clear that he's not really know, he doesn't really know exactly what's going on here uh, at the table. What is really going on here is now J Dog is saying that, wait a minute, if he, he can't just turn over my card when in fact they agreed that Josh could turn over the card. Now, whether or not the agreement was that Josh would turn over one of his cards or that J Dog could pick one of his cards to turn over really isn't the card room's problem. Meaning that you could call it maybe a scumbag move. If Josh and J-Dog agreed that they would both show one card and J-Dog shows one card and Josh doesn't, that's not something that I believe that the floor should really get involved with. And J-Dog sort of screaming like he's the victim, that his hand should be dead, that Josh's hand should be dead, is absolute nonsense. Because the action is on j Doc. Josh gains absolutely nothing here by turning over one of j Doc's cards. So if I was the floor here, what I would say is whether or not you made an agreement to have one of each of your cards shown, it's still up to Josh whether or not he wants to show one of his cards. j Doc, the action is on you. I can see as the floor man coming over here, that Josh doesn't get any information by him seeing one of your cards, he's already all in. But you clearly would gain a lot of information by seeing one of his cards. So that's an agreement between you two. The action continues. The all in is to you. I am not going to force Josh to turn over one of his cards when it's going to be a disproportionate amount of information for you Play the hand on. His hand is not dead. I might give him a penalty for touching one of your cards because I can't determine whether or not you guys agreed to have each other to turn over a card, but the action's on you. I'm not going to kill the hand, and I'm certainly not going to let you turn over one of Josh's cards because you gain so much information from that, and he gains nothing by seeing one of your own cards. He touched both my cards and flipped one over. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. You flipped it over. This player did touch this card. Ian flipped it over. I did not flip it over. Yeah, I'm, I'm making out the audio now. Yeah. You know what, Josh? 100% flipped it over. But you asked me to do that. Just I show him one card. You can all watch it. Yeah, yeah, man. Show him the card. Get him the hell out of here. <laughs> like I said earlier, I'm not killing players. I'm going to kill players right now, I, honestly. Uh, you can't do that. His hand should be dead. William, William, or whoever the commentator is, again, it's pretty clear that j Dog and Josh, that j Dog allowed Josh to turn over one of his cards. I mean, we can obviously see that. And I think it's clear, even from Josh's reaction, that he does not think that the agreement was that he was going to turn over one of his cards. Why would he turn over, let's take a step back and look at this logically. If you're bluffing, and this is why the situation is very nuanced and why sometimes in the heat of the moment, floor men can get it wrong because you got to take a really, uh, an entire step back. Josh here is bluffing. He's bluffing here with 9-8 suited. Now, obviously the floor man doesn't have the, is not privy to the information that we do that he's bluffing, but there's no way here that Josh's intention was to show one of his own cards to see one of j Dog's cards when it doesn't mean anything because Josh is already all in and he's bluffing. 
why would he show one of his cards? And you can see from his reaction that he doesn't think that he agreed to see that he agreed to turn over one of his cards. I mean, it's sort of as clear as day. And I think really this is an angle and the angler is J-Dog. He is making it seem like that there was an agreement for them to both turn over their cards. And if Josh doesn't turn over his cards, his hand should be dead, which is just total, total BS. He's playing the victim and he's like, he's not allowed to just touch my card when in fact we can see clearly that he allowed Josh to turn over one of his cards. Now, if you want to say that's an absolute no-no, Josh should never touch somebody else's cards, that's, uh, that's fine. You give Josh a penalty, but you can't allow a player who's facing an all-in to turn over one of the cards of somebody who just bet because that information is worth an infinite amount more than the player moving all-in, turning over the guy's cards whose action it is to call because the player is already all in. And he should be, he should be ejected from the game in my opinion. So what do we do? Like I said, I assure you are going to do this. But I need the action to If you do this, I'm going to show my, I'm going, I'm going to just give the money to you if you're going to do this. I'm, I'm going to be like, hold on, I'm allowed to pick one of his cards, yeah? He just said, if you're going to do this, I'm just going to give the money to you because he's bluffing. <laughs> Now Josh says that he would consider showing, but obviously Josh does not think that the agreement was that he was going to show one of his cards if J-Dog allowed him to turn over one of his cards. At that point, if I was the floor man, then I know that there is no consensus that that was what the agreement was. You've got people at the table sort of backing up. Josh, it's kind of confusing. And I just take a step back from the casino's perspective. Okay. The guy turned over one of j Dog's cards, but the action is all into j Dog. If I want to sort of penalize Josh by throwing him out of the casino, banning him for a certain amount of time for t touching somebody's cards, fine. But he gains absolutely no inherent advantage for doing that because he's already all in. If j Dog gets to see one of Josh's cards, he's going to know that he has the easiest call on the entire planet ever. Touch my cards and flip one over. Do monk his hand? I, I, I'm not well read enough in the rules to uh, know what the ruling is here normally. I've never seen something like this in my life where a player has turned another cards over. I saw it from the shiziest But what I'm saying is the hand needs to finish. Okay. So if, I'm not finishing if, the hand until you tell me I can flip one of his cards over. He said he said we would both pick one, and then he touched my heart to the door. So either his hand's dead now, or I pick a card. Either his hand is dead, he can't touch my card and flip it over. Okay, so this is where if I was Josh as a player, you actually have to stand up and not let somebody else run over you. And obviously, if Josh's native language is not English, he might just feel like, oh, maybe there was a misunderstanding. But if I were Josh, I would tell the floor man, I said... If you let me turn over one of your cards, I might consider letting you see one of my cards. I said, I might consider. And then I would tell the floor man, I'm all in. I'm not gaining anything by seeing one of his cards. I've already made the bet. You can't let him see one of my cards when it's going to give the entire hand away. That, that is the extra bit that you would have to stand up for yourself if you were Josh in this spot. I have no idea uh, what. That's what I'm saying. The this is the. If he's going to show you a card, then what? He's not allowed to flip it. One I of my cards over. I absolutely agree with you. But what I'm saying is, I'm not going to penalize that in this moment. He will get. A, he's going to sit out around. Is what's going to happen. I, Sounds like the floor is imposing some kind of penalty, uh, like a one-round penalty. And now, and now j Dog's like, he's not allowed to flip one of my cards over when they, when he let him flip his card over. We just saw it. Uh, kind of gray area. You guys are talking back. Yeah. This is highly unusual in a cash game. Now, I didn't hear it, but I guess the floor said that he could turn over his card. I don't know how the floor makes that decision. Because, again, whether or not they agreed or they didn't agree, the fact of the matter is, is that the floor shouldn't get involved with that sort of gentleman table agreement in this particular spot, because obviously it's not clear. 
And for J Dog to be able to see one of Josh's cards is just an unbelievable advantage. Whereas Josh gains nothing by seeing one of J Dog's cards. So I've got a huge, huge problem with the ruling if that was what the ruling was. And now J Dog turns the card over. J Dog turns the card over, and now obviously he's going to just put it in because he has a flush, and Josh doesn't have a flush. Do not table somebody else's card. card. I, I ever. I want ever, ever, ever. Man. I would finish the action while the I was talking about. And look at this. I mean, Josh is right. He said, I already finished my action. What are you talking about? This whole thing with the commentator saying that do not ever touch anybody's cards. Well, I mean, I would never do that in a tournament, but it's people show cards all the time. And Sometimes a guy might tell me, hey, you can pick a card, and I might turn it over. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, all these things, you know, there are different rules in different card rooms. But I think the biggest thing to take away from here is, is that I think the floor should have just been like, it's on this guy's action. If you want to penalize Josh or bar Josh, fine. But to sum this up, for J-Dog to make himself look like a victim, he can't touch one of my cards when obviously he allowed him to touch one of his cards. And even if J-Dog's understanding was that he was going to be able to see one of Josh's cards. Even if Josh were to back out of that agreement, the amount of information that j Dog gets by seeing one of Josh's cards is just absurd. Because by j Dog exposing one of his cards, the action's complete. Josh doesn't gain anything. So this is really like a victim angle. I think it's a huge angle here from j Dog, And I think Josh was a little bit confused because maybe of the language barrier, but I think that Josh sort of got screwed here. In the end, this is a call anyways. I mean, when the players looked at it, they're like, you have a flush. What is taking so long? So I don't think that it really would have made that much of a difference here, but um, I would definitely call this an angle, and this is an angle from j Dog. <laughs> Yeah.